Hi everyone, welcome to the Robert Show. Super excited to be with John today, your who's the SVP at Salesforce AI. John, welcome to the Robert Show. It's your debut. I'm super excited to chat with you today. Super happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. John, uh, quick question for you. Uh, first of all, a little bit about uh, yourself. If you can introduce yourself, tell us more about what you do at Salesforce. And I know that you all have been doing a lot of things in Agent Force, and my audience is kind of curious to learn a little about what is Agent Force and how does it reflect Salesforce's you know broader AI strategy for enterprises. So can you give us a little bit insight into that? Sure. So I lead product for Agent Force, which is a extensible platform to help our customers manage digital labor and all of the hybrid workforce they need for the future. And so we're focused on how do we help our customers create agents for their customers, for their employees and for background work so that they can get better productivity, increase sales and have better support experiences. And we've been super excited about the reception so far. That's fantastic. Thanks, uh, John, for sharing those, that thing in detail. I'm kind of also curious a little bit about the new Agent Force release. Uh, so the latest release of Agent Force also introduces uh, observability, interoperability, uh, which is a tongue twister for sure, and industry-specific features. Why were these three areas prioritized, and what does this unlock for enterprise teams? Can you uh, share a little bit more about that? Sure. So with Agent Force, we spend a lot of time on having a complete toolkit to help our customers manage their digital labor. And so this is everything from how do we have the clients and the experiences where uh, customers are or where mm -hmm. employees are. It's how do you have that deep integration to your customer data or your unstructured data answer questions? How do we have right. easy to use tools to go make an agent? Uh, so at Dreamforce, one of the things we were super excited about, we had over a thousand customers make agents there. At our developer oh. conference, we upped that to 5,000. And we've seen thousands and thousands of customers make agents fast. We've got tools to help you test your agents so you can make sure that you're doing what they're supposed to and not doing what they're not supposed to. We have other yep. tools to analyze them. And what we were observing when we were talking to the customers is, and we need new tools to handle the next level of needs for these agents. So one of the observations is hiring an agent is not like hiring a person. So if you have a person and they call in sick for the day, you've got a minor problem. If your agent's down, it's like they all went on strike. It's like hiring a whole department and your whole department just decided not to show up. And so you need a different approach and different tools to handle those types of problems. So one of the things that we are excited to introduce is health monitoring. And so mm -hmm. the humble but basic monitoring needs to alert the leaders of departments to say, hey, your agent just went on strike. You need to go figure out what happened and do that yeah. fast. And if it's one person, that's fine. You can kind of fill in the capacity. But when it's all of them, you need to resolve in minutes. So this has real time alerts that then kick off to a person and you can decide what to do. Do I fix the issue? Can I fix the issue? Do I need to route to other people and handle these questions another way? And so this is one of the new introductions that we're excited about. You also need a different set of tools to figure out, are they achieving the business results you need? And so mm -hmm. what we've been fast and furiously working on is not just analytics for, am I hitting the KPIs? Am I deflecting the support requests at the level I expected? Are the agents fast enough? Am I doing this at a deep enough level for all the different types of cases? We have what I believe is the only full lifecycle optimization loop. And so customers don't need to just be able to see, okay, how did the support agent work for all the cases? They need to be then able to see, well, the password reset category is not as doing as well as it was the other day. We have metrics yeah. that then help you identify, okay, this category, this cluster of issues was popping up but we don't stop there. Then you can click in and you wanna then see, okay, well, what happened? What are some of those sessions? So we then let you see which of the sessions had issues. Yeah. Okay, so these 15 password resets in the last hour were fine. These five weren't. Okay, let's dig in and see what was wrong with those. We then break apart the session and we give you a focused view. We call this the moments or optimization view where we have a whole mm -hmm. bunch of metrics. We score, how did the agent do? Did it hit the mark? Did it answer the question well? Was the sentiment good? 
Uh, did it able, was it able to find the answer that it was supposed to? And a whole bunch of other metrics. And we don't stop there. We then give recommendations of, and here's how you might go and fix it with links out to the tools. So you can have that whole cycle and loop to optimize these agents fast. This is the tooling that customers need to manage their digital labor workforce. I love it. I love all those insights, uh, John, and definitely uh, these are fantastic releases that you all have come up with. And specifically, you know, I love the observability piece and, you know, if they can look in more into the detailing of the tasks and then who's actually on strike as well. So, which is great, uh, John. Uh, quick question around, you know, uh, uh, the the defining of digital labor as well. So agent force is positioned as a digital labor solution. Uh, what exactly does that mean in practice and how do you see digital agents working alongside with human teams? You've kind of given me a few examples here, but just uh, if any use case that kind of comes to your mind, any customer use case that you can share would be amazing. Sure, I'll give a few examples of how we use yeah. agents internally too, and how we've got this hybrid workforce of digital labor working alongside our own employees. So be. anyone can go to the Salesforce help.salesforce.com website and see one of our prime agents in action. And so this agent is handling over 30,000 cases every single week. And what it's doing is offloading some of the Q and A and simpler questions from the tier one support. So what we do then is then have uh, an escalation path where if the agent either can't get it right or the person asked to go to a human, we then have the agent summarize, okay, this is what I did, this is what I tried, this is what the customer's looking for. And then it saves time for the person to come in because they've got a warm handoff. They're able to then handle that case and have a better, faster experience to hit exactly. the mark with the person. And then on the employee side, one of the features we've been super excited about, we put agents in our Slack channels. So as you can imagine, in a company with 70,000 people, there are lots and lots of people that need to learn everything about everything. You don't necessarily know who do you talk to and where do I get an answer? So what we did was we put agents that auto respond in a ton of different channels. One of my favorite ones is agent force technical support. People might ask a question of, hey, how do I get the agent to go do an SMS? Oh, it was over 138, 68 characters. How can I work around that? Hey, I'm having some issues. And so instead of the product and engineering team answering literally over 100 questions a day, we have an agent that's searching the, the information in that channel already, the files that have already been shared in that channel, and answering the questions on behalf of the experts. And we still have the ability for the people asking the question to say, okay, that didn't quite hit the mark. I still need some help. And then that will alert the people to then come in and basically add to that knowledge base so that the agent gets smarter. And so this is a massive productivity boost for our product and technology teams so that we can provide even better support by answering the new questions and having the agent learn and be able to repeat that to the rest of the workforce. There's a whole lot of other examples, but those are two that we've seen add a ton of productivity for our company. Love it, uh, John, and thanks for sharing that. Uh, I'm kind of also curious because I talk to a lot of enterprise leaders. I go to a lot of conferences and I've been, you know, obviously talking to enterprise leaders who've been implementing AI, uh, but sometimes that's a struggle. So uh, I want to learn from you a little bit, uh, and you talk to a lot of customers, developers, and, you know, these sort of audience as well. From pilot to production has always been a challenge, but then scaling has, is another challenge. So a lot of companies experiment with AI, but struggle to scale. Uh, what has helped your customers to move from, you know, proof of concept to real world deployment with agent force? Uh, is, is there a key that uh, worked out pretty well for them uh, and that you can even advise the other enterprise leaders who are planning to go from pilot to production? Sure. And I'll start with, uh, it's been humbling learning how to create AI platforms because it is hard. Uh, right. I thought that uh, having a great platform to go and make an agent with automated testing would then create a hockey stick where customers can self-serve and scale. And the humbling experience was we found that that was not good enough. That was not sufficient. We needed more tools and more ability to help our customers achieve the results they wanted. And that's why we introduced some of the features today. 
uh, unlike a typical task automation feature where you can automate a task and you kind of know if it works or not, uh, mm -hmm. with agents, we found that there's a large percentage of assumptions that get dashed the moment it's live. So even on our own support site, but I could also talk about a bunch of other customers, we find that what people think that customers are going to ask for is only part of the story. And there's all these other requests that come in. And there's all these other scenarios you didn't necessarily prepare your agent to do. So the mm. process that we've been proposing to our customers is as follows. First, you don't need an AI strategy. You need a product strategy or a company strategy. You need to make sure that you focus on actual business priorities. What are your KPIs? Who's the business stakeholder? And what does success look like? This is what you do for all software, but you need to still do it for AI. You shouldn't just be doing AI for AI's sake. Then you exactly. need to understand the limits of the functionality. What are scenarios which are addressable by agents and not addressable by other automation tools? and do that marrying. Okay, we want to do customer support, FAQ answering, or we want to do this dynamic, create a case, or handle uh, creating a sales account brief. Or in our industry solutions, we have a whole bunch of new industry solutions that went live this week. Uh, we have things such as helping uh, healthcare professionals doing different right. visits, or helping financial service advisors going and creating briefs. Figure out what are those scenarios that AI can do well, that mm -hmm. is worth investing in, where you can have this digital labor go in. And what is your hypothesis of what is the first set of functionality, which is achievable, that can then drive that real business value? Uh, we've seen some customers bite off more than they can chew. They have very complicated use cases, or they try to do trivial things that candidly could be done with other automation tools that you don't really need an agent for. And both yeah. of those struggle. Then you need to make sure you have the talent, whether it's through a system integrator, whether it's through Salesforce services or your own in-house right. expert. They need to know the basics of how do you do prompt engineering so that you can get the agent to do what you need? How can you make sure that you understand how to get the right data in there and to do that optimization? And then you need to treat it kind of as you treat your people in that you need to have an ongoing team that's staffed for improvement to make this digital labor workforce get better and better. So we found that that's the formula success for success. And we've been super excited to see uh, a bunch of customers. Like one example is 1-800-ACCOUNTANT. So mm. in the US, we have tax season and you have to file your taxes by April. And so it's kind of silly that the government knows what you need to pay, but you have to prove it to them and do all this work. So we have yep. all these people in the US that then have to spend time with experts and software to then go and file your taxes. And so that creates this moment in time where there's a massive surge in customer support for the tax service providers. And 1-800-Accountant is one of those providers. So what they did to help handle this surge is put an agent that could handle so many of the customer support questions they get in and have this surge capacity to meet this big deadline that they had for April. And they're super thrilled by the results, seeing a 70% deflection rate, and we're able to scale out what they needed. Love it. I think these are fantastic factors of how, and you know, great example as well that you kind of mentioned about uh, from going from pilot to production, but there are multiple factors that kind of play a very important role. Talk about the strategy, the KPIs, understanding the limitations, but at the same time being more open to you know doing this and making sure that you have great uses use cases kind of coming out from this uh john i promised one last question and this is for our audience if folks want to reach out to you learn more about the different things that y'all are doing uh i know salesforce is the best place they can go agent force is the best place they can go and learn more about the use cases blogs uh also try uh, a lot of things uh but if they want to follow you is linkedin a best place uh, or any other platform that you prefer yeah linkedin is the best platform uh i should know my handle but uh <laughs> i'll find it over here you can find yeah. me john cusera on linkedin fantastic that's great john such a pleasure chatting with you thanks for visiting the robert show we'll keep the conversation going but really great insights on agent force and the future of digital labor in the enterprise world thanks again Thank you. Super exciting. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today.